What's going on pedalboard people? I'm Spencer with West Coast Pedalboard. Today we're going to show you how to solder the SP500 square plug and the SP5S, the mini straight plug using Mogami 2319. Let's do this thing. We're going to go over the tools that you're going to be needing along with the supplies and parts. So first is going to be a number one Phillips driver that's going to take the screws off of the retaining jacket for both of the straight plug and the square plug, flat plug. We're going to need some crimping tools. These are snap-on, but anything with a 20 gauge and a 10 gauge. Um, we have an electric magnetic driver here that makes putting a bunch of them together a little bit easier, so that's always nice, but you can use a mechanic, mechanical or just a hand driver with a number one bit. We use um, this rosin core Kester wire for the soldering itself. Um, we get it from a place out in uh, uh, Massachusetts. We'll link it in on the video. And here's our soldering iron setup. It's just a hacko. We run it at 750 and that's going to be about it. Let's get on down to this. All right, step one is going to be trimming your cables. We're going to be using Mogami 2319. That's what we sell in all of our DIY kits. And so the first step is to determine your length. So we're just going to run a couple eight inch cables off here just to show you what it's like. And so the most important thing we, we're going to do here now is just make sure that we strip this cable properly. All right, so let's get into that. The SP500s, you can see that's the flat pancake style. You don't need to strip much off. We're going to strip out the outside jacket. It's going to be using the number 10 gauge stripper. We're going to strip it back maybe about a half an inch. All right, so a good set of strippers is going to cut a nice clean, uh, cut, cut your outside jacket nice and clean like this. And the cool th one of the cool things about the Mogami cable is it's spiral bound. So it's real easy to just take your finger and peel this ground right back away. So super important now is to twist this really tight. So as so you can see, I'm going to try to push this as far down as I can and twist that really really tightly like this. Okay, so you should have something like about that. Now the next thing is going to be stripping the conductor. And that's 20 gauge. We're going to go about eighth inch or three sixteenths. I'm going to twist this really tight too. And next step is to peel off the real thin black coating right here. And you just use your thumbnail, just gently pull this back. And after you're done with that, you're going to be ready to tin this cable, and we're going to start soldering here in a second. So at this stage, this is what you should be looking at. All right, so I went ahead and stripped the other side. So basically what we have here is one cable that's ready to take two connectors. So what we're going to do now is we're going to tin both of the side here, this side, and then both of these connectors and get this thing going. So there we are, we have our wires tinned, our connectors are tinned, we're pretty much ready to go. So on these here, the conductor wire is going to go on the right side and then the ground is going to go on the left. I'm right handed so I like to actually turn these things a little bit sideways, it makes it a little easier to get in there because the, cause the, um, the tab on the ground especially is recessed. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and do this conductor wire first. All right, there it goes. Now I'm gonna take this ground, push that down in there. And with the tin on there, it's gonna make it real nice and easy. And we'll gonna pull this out here. And that side's finished. I'll swap it around. Do the second side. And this is a really fast process once you get down to making a few of these things. It goes really quickly. 
um, especially if you can get yourself a little magnetic screw gun like, like what I'm going to show you right now. All right, so the way I like to put them back together is basically just hold the cap on, take my magnetic driver, and super fast. If you don't have one of these, that's all right. You can just manually do it. Um, that's going to be it here. I'm going to tighten it down. Second one here. And it's a real quick process. Like I said, once you get in the groove a little bit, this will happen super fast for you. And the good thing about making your own cables is if one happens to need to be changed, you can just cut it back and resolder it. And there you go. There's one cable there. Because there's a couple screws, those are actually going to help with the retaining of the cable. So this thing screws apart and then your actual plug, you know, separates from this piece. There is a little piece of plastic in there. So just be cautious of that. Take your driver, again, a number one. And we're gonna just undo these until they move past the point so you can stick a cable through there, all right? And this whole size fits, I think it's uh, 0.25 inches or a little bit more. We have a, um, compatibility cable guide on the website so if you're looking for the product the image in there also has the um the compatibility on cable cable charts anyways uh process is very similar to the sp500 aside from the distance on this shrink is going to be a little bit less it's going to be about 3 16 and just because the connector is small we just want to keep it as tight as possible so this is what it's going to look like when you're finished again on the conductor wire stripping away that black plastic on that all right so i'm going to show you one here then we're just going to wire this cable up all right super important on these smaller ones to get this ground cable really tight and low um hopefully that makes sense okay twist this tight also All right, so there we are. Now we're gonna tin a couple of these connectors, tin the cable, and go for it. So the bottom is the ground, top is going to be the conductor. I actually like to do the conductor wire first and I'm going to be connecting it from the bottom side actually, not the top. So I'm going to stick the iron underneath. There it goes. Can you see that from the side there? kind of try to get this over here this way so you guys can see this and since that's already tinned I'm gonna go ahead and push this down take a look that all looks good okay definitely don't want to hit this tab in here with this ground wire that's going to short it out so it is very close, but it's not touching. All right, so from here, we're going to take one of the screw-on clamp connectors, put that back on. Very easy to put these together.
right, so on the opposite side, we're going to put the jacket on first. And one more time. Going for the conductor wire first. If it's a little long, I'm going to trim that down. All right. I'm going to hit the conductor first. I'll spin that up so you can see it, hopefully. Okay. We're running this iron at 750, so it's real quick. Um, don't need to touch it for too long and shouldn't have to touch it for too long. Whoops. Take a look, that looks good too. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Soldering Patch Cables 101. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.